all these different buildings, but there's nothing in the record about what different types of gas stations could be developed under the two overlays. In fact, if you looked at that uh, chart Mr. Aaron referred to, they have 12 fuel positions under both overlay zones. The only party that did that was us. Mr. Kimmel, who's a planner, looked at the two overlay zoning standards and determined what's the most intense gas station that could be allowed under the two. And what he determined is under that outer highway commercial, you could have 18 fueling positions. And under the core commercial, you could only have nine. And in fact, the reason that Fred Meyer is going through this whole exercise of an amendment, obviously they're doing it for a reason, right? Is because they want 12 and they can't get 12 fuel positions under the CC, not based on the CC overlay standards. So that's the only evidence that's in the record. So what you have in sum is engineers agreeing, agreeing that the most intense traffic use that could be allowed under either overlay is a gas station. And you only have one bit of evidence that shows what kinds of gas stations, the different kinds of gas stations that could be developed under the two different design standards. And we showed that there's significantly more fueling positions under the OHC overlay. And as a result of that, there's going to be more traffic. As I indicated earlier, any more traffic further degrades a projected failing intersection. That means under the TPR rule, they have to do further analysis and they have to demonstrate what's going to be the impact and what type of mitigation can they propose in order to fix the additional impacts that they're going to cause. I think that that's a no-brainer. I think Lube is going to look at that and they're going to say the evidence is clear. And I apologize for having to object. It's not something I normally like to do, but I had to object because there is no other evidence in the record on that issue. <coughs> On the pedestrian crosswalk, uh, I'm not going to belabor that issue much except to note the fact that the pedestrian crosswalk was an issue raised under the amendments. And under the amendments, the only traffic standard that applies is the TPR standard, the transportation plan. The TPR standard requires that you look out through the, whole, through the end of the planning period, which under your transportation system plan is the year 2030. They didn't evaluate the impacts of the pedestrian crosswalk based on the conditions in the year 2030. They looked at it at conditions in terms of when they project to open the store. And the whole argument about whether that standard really applies or not, that ship has sailed. Luba remanded that issue, and if they wanted to challenge it, they, they could have and should have challenged Luba's decisions, but they didn't. So we believe that what's lacking there is that they need to look at the pedestrian crosswalk impacts through the end of the planning period, because that's the only standard that applies. On the site design review, um, there's a procedural issue, which Mr. Abel touched on. And that is this question about whether or not the applications are in fact consolidated. Uh, it's our position that they are, are not consolidated applications, no matter what you call it in this procedure, because what determines whether they're consolidated is whether they're applications that were processed as part of the same procedures. You have one application that was going through a type 4 procedure and has been up to Luba and back and is now on remand to you. And another one that's a type 3, which is a planning commission decision with appeal to this body that you're hearing for the first time. Those aren't consolidated. Now, the reason that the applicants wants you to determine that they're consolidated is because that's the only way that they can rely on the proposed zone change that they have. And it was their choice to allow the applications to be split and processed separately. And in fact, during the LUBA appeal, the applicant and the city, but it was predominantly the applicant that was, you know, carrying the, the, uh, the, the bucket on the legal arguments, argued to Luba that you, can't, you shouldn't even review the amend, amendment uh, applications because 
they're consolidated. So you have to wait until the site design review application is decided, and then they both come to you as consolidated application. Luba rejected that argument. That issue's already been decided, and the applicant chose not to appeal that decision. So I think that that's even an issue that's already been decided beyond the, the purview of this body. But as a result of that, they're, they're stuck having to demonstrate compliance with the commercial core standards, and they haven't even attempted to do that. But putting that issue aside, if you look at the outer highway commercial, um, they have made some changes. They have made some improvements and addressed some of the issues. But they haven't addressed all of them. And the reason that they haven't addressed all of them adequately, in our opinion, is because there are certain standards they just can't comply with. You just can't develop a gas station the way that they want to develop it in a way that's consistent with the design and development standards. And the most obvious one is the requirement that your staff and the applicant talked about that there be 40%, 60% uh, of the, of the uh, excuse me, 40% of the, of the lot frontage has a building within the minimum 10-foot setback. Well, they're not proposing a building. They're proposing a trellis, an arbor. That's what they're saying satisfies that building frontage requirement. Well, a wall or a trellis, whatever you call it, is not a building. If you look at the definition, yes? Five yeah. minutes. Okay, thank you. I thought, I thought you were That's asking good. for a question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a building is a building. A building under the definition of your code is, is, a, is a structure that is intended to enclose or uh, support properties, people, etc. That's not what this does. This is a manufactured gimmick, really, to try and meet a requirement that clearly doesn't meet the intent and from our perspective, doesn't even meet the plain language definition of a building. And what's ironic is that all throughout this proceeding, until tonight, they've been taking the position that the fuel canopy does not qualify as a building because it's not enclosed, doesn't have four walls. And yet, now they're saying that, oh wait, the trellis, that is a building. And then tonight, for the first time, they've changed their whole position on the fuel canopy and are now saying, well, the fuel canopy is a building and it meets the FAR standards. Staff talked about this issue. I mean, they read from their report where they said the Planning Commission found that the, the fuel canopy, which is the, the cover that goes over the, the fuel position, so it's a structure that is intended to provide cover for patrons and the equipment, they found that's not a building because that's what Fred Meyer argued because they don't want it to be a building because it creates a problem under another criteria. So what you have is them making some efforts on those things that they can comply with, but some that they just can't, they can't comply because of the nature of the use and the nature of the design. And again, this is going to set precedent for uh, one of your first developments under the DCO, and you need to make sure that it's done right, because every future developer is going to say, you let them get away with it, why can't we get away with it? And so what my clients are asking you to do is enforce those standards. Um, with respect to the updated traffic impact analysis, I'm not going to go into great detail in that other than to note that Lancaster Engineering, Mr. Ard, submitted a letter on that issue. We've, we've stated our position on that. And again, they made some improvements and they've addressed some of the issues that, um, that we pointed out, but there's still deficiencies. So to summarize, you've got some pretty significant problems or deficiencies that remain with this application. You've got an amendment application with evidence that shows that a different kind of fuel station can be developed under the two zones. And both engineers agree that the fuel facility is the most traffic intensive use. So you have unrebutted conclusive evidence 
that it will make a difference. In fact, the whole reason that they're going through this exercise is they want to be able to get more fuel stations on this property. And then you've got these development standards that they still haven't uh, adequately addressed, and nor can they adequately address. So one quick thing, because I know it's going to come up on rebuttal, is with respect to the evidence about the number of fuel facilities, it's our position that the applicant never introduced any evidence into the record. In fact, to the contrary, their position is the fuel facilities will be exactly the same. <laughs> but they never introduced any evidence that shows how they got came about with any kind of conclusion, nor did they ever rebut our planner's evidence about the different number of fuel facilities that can be developed under the two overlay zones. And what I was objecting to was Mr. Aaron's suggestion that there was evidence in the record to suggest to the contrary. The proper procedure, because you've already decided no new evidence, and if you allow evidence in, it's going to create a procedural error, and we'll be back doing this again. The proper procedural mechanism to cure that is to strike any evidence to that effect. They've got their evidence. They showed what it is on, on, the, on the graph. We agree that that evidence is there. They've got their letter from the traffic engineer, but there's no evidence that's evidence like our, our planner and traffic engineer produce. And so on that, I think the prudent course would be to strike uh, and make a finding that that evidence, to assess new evidence, is not accepted or relied on by the City Council. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, happy to answer. Uh, seeing none, that will conclude our presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we get to the rebuttal piece, um, is there any uh, public opponents or proponents on the matter? Okay, seeing that, I'll give you guys a 10 minute rebuttal. So, for the record, Steve Abel representing the applicant. So um, when there's an allegation of new evidence that's submitted into the record, the other party's remedy, if you will, is to ask for the record to be held open so that there's an opportunity to rebut. And Mr. Connors hasn't asked for that, but that's his remedy. His remedy is not to strike it, that evidence. It's not to dismiss it. It's not to throw it away. It's for him to ask for a continuance or for the record to be held open, and so he has an opportunity to rebut it. He hasn't done that. But I'm struck by the paragraph that is in the July 9th letter uh, from our transportation engineer to the city. Page 192 in our packet. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have the page and, numbers. I'm and sorry. the graph that he presented it's starts on page 192. 192, so it's probably in your record, 193, page 2 of the letter. In the case of fuel facilities, the number of fueling positions that can be located at the site would only depend on the setback requirements of the CC and OHC design overlay zones. With a minimum 10-foot setback in the proposed OHC overlay zone, less area would be available for fuel dispensers and vehicle queuing than in the current CC zone with no minimum setback. It is unlikely that eliminating the 10-foot setback would allow sufficient area for additional fuel dispenser lanes. We have assumed no change between the two overlay zones. That issue is addressed. Now, Mr. Connors may disagree with the factual question of how you calculate those things, how that analysis takes place. But the fact is, you weigh the evidence. You weigh this statement that's made by uh, McKenzie, and you weigh what um, uh, actually was said uh, in and before the Planning Commission as a part of this uh, um, proceeding. And I think you should put that up against what Luba asked for in its opinion. And I don't know that you have that, but it's public record because it is a, is a part of the 
um, public record because it is a case, case law at this point. Essentially, Luba said on this issue, requires further analysis under the TPR um, to evaluate the square footage and hence the traffic generation capacity of the most intensive use allowed in the C2 zone that could be reasonably constructed on the subject property given the different footprint, height, setback, floor area ratios that would apply to the sub areas. So that's the analysis that my consultant team did was what could reasonably be constructed. Not what a bunch of <laughs> angels on a pinhead could decide might be constructed, be it, but be uneconomic, but what actually could be um, constructed. And then the key point is, if that analysis showed that constructing the use under the OHC standards would increase traffic generation compared to constructing the use under the CC standards, then further analysis is necessary. If not, and this is the case we have, then the city would, could conclude that no further analysis is necessary and the TPR is satisfied. That's the evidence I think we've brought you with respect to that issue, is that the OHC zone provides for less traffic generation than does that CC zone. So it goes that direction. Secondarily, on another issue, this whole question of the consolidated process is a little bit like chasing a rabbit um, through the bushes because what Mr. Connors would like to have you do is say that because you process these separately, because your code requires processing separately, that deconsolidated this application. Even though the applicant came in and gave you a consolidated application and said, we want this processed, and the applicant agreed that your code said, you know, you have to go this path, this path, this path, the fact remains they were consolidated. Severing the pieces of the application to process them in accordance with your code separately does not deconsolidate an application. It doesn't. It's how your city responds to a consolidated application by moving through those processes. And in fact, as I say, we're here today with all of it before us. That's evidence that it's gone its own paths through the decision-making bodies, but it all ends up in one proceeding with one decision, one consolidated decision. Mr. Connors has liked to loosely define things then the city's code uh, has its own definitions for building. And, and he did speak to a building, but he gave a definition that simply doesn't exist in your own code. Building means a structure built for the shelter or enclosure of persons, animals, chattels, or property of any kind. That definition is a broad definition. It allows for that building to be built in a way that includes the trellises, that brings that trellis out to that setback line. That's what the code says. If the city council, when it adopted these def definitions, wanted a different definition, that's what they would have done. But they wanted this definition, and this is the definition that works in this particular circumstance, applies in this particular circumstance, and it's, one, it's the one that the applicant has responded to in uh, designing this particular facility. So with that, I'm going to conclude and allow you to deliberate um, but as I say, I think we've presented you a complete application that meets all of your code criteria. And as your code requires, I'd be happy to prepare the findings for approval of this application. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Questions and comments? Well, let me close the public hearing. Um, questions by us or for staff for any clarification okay maybe make yes, some sir. comments um, I appreciate both sides I think you both came very well had, had great teams on both sides I commend the Planning Commission and the Planning Department for working through a, a difficult topic. Um, and I commend the, the changes and upgrades to try to satisfy some of the questions that came up. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, my questions have been answered on this. 
uh, the questions you can't answer are those ones in the future, you know, as, as far as the Second Avenue activity. But I believe that uh, the applicant brought forward uh, sufficient information um, for me to feel comfortable with their application. Is there, do we want um, part of the conversation for consideration this evening? Is, um, you know, the under page 21 of our packet under the revised traffic study from Luba, do we include, want to include, or change up the recommendations that are there? Again, one, the queuing piece seems to have, uh, as discussed, ODOT already monitors uh, in the staff report that that's something that's already monitored and you know, adjusted as need be. The second piece was to construct the curb extension at second at second and not. Um, make that as a condition of approval at either. Um, so Brian Brown, is that something that we would have to um, put in there as uh, something right now that we needed to be put in there for? Um, <coughs> I'm not really sure <clears throat> in my way of thinking having an obligation to a development project that might occur two or three years henceforth and then at that time saying oh by the way remember back three years ago you promised to build this that makes a very difficult process I agree and uh, that's why I wrote this condition that we either decide because of the traffic information uh, that's been provided, the level of traffic that's on second and likely to be on second as a result of this development, even with a full service driveway, whether we wanted to help mitigate. And what we have is the opportunity during their construction to do some further neighborhood uh, input, find out if the people along the street want it or don't and if they don't then the way this thing's worded we don't put it in we don't require them but if they do then we have their help in helping design it and installing it uh, that was the thought process but i'm not advocating for or against it we're just presenting to you that our traffic engineer says this is a legit legitimate uh, proposal to calm traffic on a at least 50% res residential street today. The walk, uh, whether they're doing that at Knott Street, I'm not sure. I know that there's, uh, in the days and the afternoons that I've been over there, that there is substantial pedestrian traffic from students walking home and from the high school, et cetera. Um, you know, I've been at the chamber office in the afternoons. It's, it's a, a well-used path versus walking along 99E, which we've had conversation about in the past that 99E is not a pedestrian-friendly thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. No. Um, so I guess I pose that to council if that is a suitable condition that that is something that we want or do we want it scaled in a different fashion I think it's reasonable to in, include it we can't predict <clears throat> all of the things that are going to happen on 2nd Avenue but we've got one here so uh, and it's up and, and there's a trigger for it that would include community input so I would be inclined to support that. Okay. You know, likewise, Mr. Mayor, I, you know, as an engineer, I want numbers. Uh, we don't have them. Mm -hmm. But also as an engineer, I can smell trouble. And I think there's no doubt that traffic will increase on second. Uh, we have Nexus. Do I see Brian's head go up and down? We do. Okay. We have Opportunity, which uh, Fred Meyer's own traffic study indicates there's an opportunity here so I would be inclined 
for some sort of traffic mitigation there. The council is well aware of my feelings on bump outs. I don't know if that's the most effective mitigation, but I, sm I smell a need and an opportunity with a legitimate nexus. Okay. Roundabout, um, would you like that better? Ooh. Oh, geez. <laughs> Mr. Parker, with all due respect. Stop signing signs. Stop signing signs. Brian, can we, can the verbiage, um, does it have to be a curb extension or can it be as Councillor Coleman maybe suggested a, the, Mile, mile, mile. How about appropriate mitigation? Appropriate mitigation, changing the verbiage I, to appropriate I think mitigation. His idea, at least in my way of thinking, is a a modification of this curb extension design that would also include a raised crossing or something with it. Because I think, regardless of whether it has a raised crossing or not, you're probably still going to have the extension part are you not fully mm -hmm. achieving what the traffic engineers have proven to be effective in slowing and traffic and providing for that safe haven for pedestrians I don't want to commit to a curb extension though there without further studies because I think that cars and I'm one of them traveling from 99 to township on not might have a more difficult time maneuvering that jog in the road when you've got curb extensions on it. I don't know how often you travel. Not I, I'm not often, so, but I more of the jog. But there's, they don't meet up, as the sh picture showed. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to get around a curb extension and then get to the next extension of not, you might have a problem. And I don't want to commit to, yeah, we're going to do curb extensions. We, yeah. As Councilor Dale pointed out, we don't have numbers. We don't even know if that's a need. I would like to explore other options before we go that route. Well, it seems like a minimum could be a stop sign at that point. It's that calms to traffic stop. a lot more yeah. than slowing it right. down with a curb extension. Right. So for the <laughs> well, and we could put we could put that in, and we could pay for it. The, que the question is, at this point, do we want to commit? the applicant to a partnership, financial partnership, in, a, in addressing something. And, I, and I'm with you, Tim. It's, 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 it's really hard to say what the situation is going to be there. Yeah. And um, I don't know if it would be, it would be acceptable to say that uh, upon further analysis, uh, an appropriate mitigation plan, but um, I don't know if that's the right thing at the right place or not. And, and we may not we may not be able to include it, and we just may be on the hook for fixing whatever happens on on Second Avenue uh, as we go along. I ride my bike along on Second Avenue because it's not 99, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I coming along to the uh, corner there with uh, uh, Ivy and Second. I I see cars already queuing up, uh, so. We, may, we just may not know enough right now to be able to make a, a, a judgment on what needs to happen in the future. We're, we're barely capable of deciding what we should do right now, so <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's not guess on the future. So are you saying you don't want to include it as a condition of approval? I don't think I, I, I don't think we've got the evidence to be able to say what we want there. Yeah, the challenge is, is coming up with language yeah. that's meaningful yep. at this point. I mean. I'm interested in it. I want it. Yeah. But codifying and memorializing it is an issue. I don't think it's something we can do tonight. So it's it's not an application stopper to no. me. Okay. If that's another way of phrasing it for tonight. So, because um, I, I I agree with that the aspect of is it going to be a need and how do we. It probably we, is going to be a need, but it's not it? something that I think that we can write language about tonight. So it's it, I I think this this application needs to rise or fall based upon its 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 merits as it is, um, and uh, it, trying to predict um, mitigation of Second Avenue at this point I I think is just not not something that's could have produced a great outcome. A question for Brian, yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, Brian, it, 
is this the type of issue I'm looking for edification here is this the type of issue that a transportation SDC attempts to address the fees that they pay is that banking on the future system-wide transportation improvement and that's what we collect SDCs for and so I suppose we could spend part of our street funds that are SDC derived in that Greg are you aware whether there's a problem with well I don't see it as a capacity increasing improvement uh, so that would be only problem Right. Oh, that's hinges on capacity. Yeah, fair enough. But also, uh, there's a couple of different things you can do. We do have a traffic safety committee. You could ask them to maybe take a look at this issue. And I think you can also uh, ask for some uh, escrowed amount. To look at this issue, and once that's decided, uh, that could be those funds could be used to do that mitigation. So we wouldn't need to decide tonight, but your motion could say that we know is going to be a problem. We did see some numbers, at least case or at least the uh, impact was still an, uh, an increase of three to four hundred cars, mm -hmm. 21 to 2400 on Ivy. They didn't have any turning counts, but still. Just in Ivy, the, their estimate was, I think, three or four hundred cars more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they obviously, take a bigger traffic study or a car count to see where the turns are going to be, whether they're going down Knox Street. So, that could be part of it. So, get to Councilor Parker's suggestion that it is, I think, beyond, you know, it is pretty big, uh, beyond the scope of the approval or denial tonight. But if you're going to approve it, I would say um, we would like some mitigating. I get the feeling that the that they're the verbiage of having in the motion of making sure that we have verbiage of mitigation that we can then later come back and discuss what that is in a, a quicker in a quick timely fashion Brian I, that's kind of the vibe I'm, I'm hearing well I Greg brings up a good point here is is that uh, we, we do have evidence in the record showing some increase in traffic on Second Avenue. That, that is a fact. What that means, what that's going to look like, whether it even needs, whether it meets, it meets any sort of reasonable threshold to be mitigated, we don't know. But we do have, we do have, we do have testimony that shows there will be an impact. Mm -hmm. And what we need, I think, is, is to have some additional study on that so whether it would be appropriate uh, how, however language is written on this to have uh, uh, some funds put in escrow for for future study or that sort of thing I don't know how you write that but um, you're right we we do know that there's going to be an impact the question is what does it mean well and if I've heard the testimony right I believe that there was an offer to put some mitigation in well and I hate to look at your horse in the mouth, <laughs> to be real honest with you. Well, and I, and I think because that... there may be, there may be an issue, whether it is or not. So well, and that's what I hear is that we don't, we, we want to look at and accept the gift. Yes. Um, it's a question of in what capacity and what fashion do we want that gift? And so how much, you know, do we do that now or later when, and now in hopes of what may or may not happen, or, and then how do you, as Brian pointed out, how do you later come back and go, oh, by the way, remember three years ago we had this meeting and we, we want to hold you to this now. We need a check. That's why I'm saying that you have an opportunity tonight. Right. <laughs> well, let's, let's, to address that issue. Let, let, let's see how big the horses would be then. So, so we, need to, we need to figure out how big. So okay. the condition of approval would be setting up an escrow account for mitigation study? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's good for me. Is it just for the study, or is it to actually help pay for a legitimate traffic? Well, it would call be a study, and then mechanism. the appropriate measures. I would think. It's 
why we have a lawyer to write language for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, and, and I can see and, where and instead of saying constructing curb extensions, you could say, you know, the amount of money that it would take to make those curb extensions could be set aside in escrow for a legitimate form of traffic calming mechanism for future use. Did you remember well, what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> well, or something to that degree. Yeah. Right. I mean, if they're willing to pay that amount, you could say whatever that costs. Curb extensions don't. or an amount equal to for a mitigation study and, and actual mitigation itself. Okay. Got that, Kim? <laughs> and then who negotiates that? <laughs> I'm trying to avoid putting precise amounts into our motion tonight. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we well, just whatever whatever amount that was going to cost to construct the curb extensions that were um, proposed. I see what you're going. That amount can be with what's already been put on the table for a study and or some sort of legitimate form of traffic. And because it's escrow, there'd be some date certain Probably. at which, if we don't do anything, Fred Myers gets a check back, or is that how you're picturing it? <laughs> I was I was going to ask how how what's that transport? How how big of a speed hump is uh, half a mile? You know. Okay. So, um, what's our next step, Mr. Mayor? Well, I think Joe, do we? He's waiting for motion. I can't well, I am, but I want to make sure we craft it correctly to capture what we've just captured the mitigation piece, capture the study piece. So how so help me craft that motion, well, and I, sir? And I, and I see that there's a sample motion. Yeah. If there that's is the yeah. way in which you guys at least want to entertain a vote on yeah. it. Uh, and whether or not you could say that's with uh, revised designs and submitted application materials, along with the you know language we just discussed yep. about the uh, setting money aside. So if we look at the sample motion, if I read it correctly, so looking for a motion to approve uh, DR-1203 slash TA-1201 slash ZC-1202 with the revised designs and the submitted application materials addressing the LUBA remand issues uh, to include appropriate funds to study and implement traffic mitigation. Um, yes. On 2nd Avenue. On 2nd Avenue. Be placed in escrow. To be placed in escrow. <laughs> Kim, did you capture all of that? I'll have to go back and listen to the audio, but it would be Okay. All right. So, do we need a formal motion at this point then? We have to read the page inside. Tim, are you able to do that? Um, or do you want to do that? Okay. You're going to go for it? I think I have it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move to approve DR 12-03 slash TA 12-01 slash ZC 12-02 with the revised designs and the submitted application materials addressing the LUBA remand issues and to include appropriate funds to analyze and implement appropriate traffic calming measures on 2nd Avenue. And, and, fun, second, and funds to be placed in escrow. And the funds to be placed in escrow. I'll second that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I have your motion that you wrote there? Uh, I kind of went off. Yeah, hold on. Okay. <laughs> Brian needs to read it. Mm -hmm. I do need oh, to I read it. Write it all down. Okay. Well, I got. We want to make sure we get this right for you, gentlemen, in case something else happens from here on out. <laughs> Not that it will. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 yeah. I feel like we need Jeopardy theme music. <laughs> I hope you can read my very fast handwriting. It's under the bottom line. Okay. <laughs> I so use the, the sample motion and then I tag that onto it. Okay, so the motion has been made by Councilor Hensley, seconded by Councilor Parker uh, to approve DR 12-03 slash TA 
12-01 slash ZC 12-02 with the revised designs and the submitted application materials addressing the LUBA remands to include appropriate funds to analyze and implement traffic calming measures on 2nd Avenue and placing funds in escrow to do so. All those in favor? Do we need a roll call, Kim? It's not a, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. That's good. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? That passes 5 0. There's your notebook. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate that. We'll move into uh, the next piece. There are no resolutions and ordinances at this time. The new business item uh, amendment to the employment contract of the city attorney is being tabled for further conversation in exec session uh, at our next city council meeting. Um, so we can move from that. Um, city administrator business and staff reports. Uh, next opportunity for citizen input at this time. Okay, you're seeing none. Action review. <coughs> you have approved DR 1203 TA 1201 CC 1202 with revised designs and submitted application materials addressing the legal remand issues to include appropriate funds to analyze and implement traffic calming measures on 2nd Avenue and funds to be placed in escrow. Excellent. Thank you. I have one more comment. Mr. Parker. Um, I wanted to thank Angie. I think uh, a year ago you hadn't made a single presentation to council. Is that correct? <laughs> I believe so, and I think it's and most of them are been quite a few more since then, and most of them have been on this. <laughs> well, um, I I appreciate your your work and your seasoning on it, uh, your ability to take a large amount of information and uh, convey it to us in a short amount of time. This policymaker appreciates it, and um, I've, I've seen some real tremendous growth in, in your work, and I appreciate what you've done for the city. Thank you, Council Parker. Thank you, sir. Um, it's right there in front of me. All right, Anything we, else? No, we have no exec session this evening, I don't believe. I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved and by Councillor Dale and second by Councillor Hensley to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, Canby. Thank you very much. I wanted to show those Boy Scouts how much fun it was to be a <laughs> Left too early. I know, they beat feet. All sorts of